Dulcie at Decorum S by Wilfred Owen. Um, this is also a very famous poem. I studied this when I was in high school, and I studied it again when I was in college. And I actually assigned it to my senior uh, English students this year because it's a very famous poem. It's wonderfully expressive. Reading through this, you have these wonderful expressions, these wonderful prayers. All went lame, all blind, drunk with fatigue, deaf even to the hoots of gas shells dropping softly behind. It's so subtle. Dropping softly, those gas shells dropping softly. It's hidden in the line. You don't even notice the gas shells dropping until the next time. Gas! Gas! Quick, boys! There's, there's an urgency to it. Surprise! We didn't even notice the gas. It was in the middle of the last line, and now suddenly it's at the start of the line. It's capitalized. You have to pay attention to it. Um, different phrases. Limped on, bloodshot. Many had lost their boots, but limped on, bloodshot. They've got nothing on their feet, but blood. It's wonderfully expressive. But then this, this, the, the description, just the wonderful, the beautifully disgusting imagery here of the man dying of gas, floundering like a man in uh, fire or lime, dim through the misty panes and thick green light as under a green sea I saw him drowning. In all my dreams before my helpless sight he plunges at me, guttering, choking, drowning. Guttering, it's just such a wonderful word to describe what's happening. This is World War I. This is Wilfred Owen is one of the uh, writers of World War I. He's expressing the absolute terror, the absolute horror of a new sort of war that nobody had ever even conceived of before. Gas weapons, poison gas, death gas, um, trench warfare, it had all been, and it, it, was, it had never been fought on that scale before. And it horrified people with the sheer savagery of what you could do with war. And it was descriptions like this that really brought it home to people. All this stuff. Watch the white eyes writhing in his face, his hanging face, like a devil sick of sin. If could hear at every jolt the blood come gargling from the froth corrupted lungs, obscene as cancer, bitter as the cud of vile, incurable sores on innocent tongues. It's one, it, it, it sticks, it makes you shudder. It is just wonderful imagery that you cannot escape. And it, um, poems like this. The phrase, dulce et decorum est, it's on there at the bottom there, the old lie, dulce et decorum est pro patria mori, was a famous saying. Prior to this poem, it was a famous saying. It is a sweet and proper thing to die for one's country. And we have, of course, this. We have in America. It's like, ah, you serve your country, son, and you do your country proud. It's, it's sweet and proper. You know, go overseas and die for your country. And Wilfred Owen is like, no, you're full of it. There's nothing glorious. There's nothing honorable about dying whether it's for your country or not. Dying is horrible. Dying is painful. Dying is disgusting. It's like there's nothing sweet. There's nothing appropriate about death. And this is his take. And this is a huge shift that's going on in World War I that suddenly people are like, you know what? War is not great. War is painful. War is terrible. And this is a new kind of conception of war <sighs> during this time period. 